So in a 2019 study, they studied 11 men and instructed them to do two separate workouts, either followed by a cold water plunge or a normal recovery. And so they instructed these guys to do back squats at about 80% of their maximum load. And they did six sets of 10 repetitions. And they did this two times a week apart. And one time they did a 15 minute cold water plunge, which was at a water temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, or they had a normal recovery. And the researchers measured their blood samples to assess their hormone levels before the recovery, at five minutes after recovery, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. Now in the control group, meaning the group that had no recovery involving cold water plunges at the 60 minute mark, they found that their testosterone actually increased by almost 9%. Whereas the people who did the cold water plunge saw a decrease in their testosterone levels by on average about 10%. However, when you looked at this from a statistical viewpoint, they didn't see any statistically significant difference between the two groups, meaning that if you, any difference that you saw was likely due to chance and not because of actual clinical findings. So based on this initial very small study, we don't see a significant change in serum testosterone levels after immersing yourself in a cold water plunge. Another study looked at 12 volleyball players from the Brazilian Men's Volleyball Super League. So these 12 guys were then divided into two groups. They did training for five days, and after these five trainings, they would have to undergo some sort of recovery. The treatment group underwent a cold water immersion, and the control group was exposed to LED light therapy. They were told it was LED light therapy, but it was actually an inactive LED diode, so it was basically not doing anything. So on the first and sixth day of their training, so before and after the study, they underwent evaluation of both the saliva and their blood for testing. So the other interesting thing about the study is they really tried to set it up in a good way. They told the players to avoid any food supplements. They told to maintain a certain dietary input, meaning they had to follow certain macros. So they had to keep their carbohydrates at 60%, their proteins at least 15% and 25% of lipids. So they wanted to make sure that there was really no other factors that could affect their testosterone or their other physiologic measures. Now, in terms of the cold water group, they were submerged into an inflatable pool with uh, water that was about 14 degrees Celsius. And they were very specific. They immersed them up to their xiphoid process, so right about here, for about 15 minutes. And they made sure to maintain the water temperature. They kept checking it and making sure that if it got warmer, they added some ice or things to cool it down to keep it at that 14 degrees Celsius. Bottom line, when they looked at the first and sixth straight blood work, they didn't see a difference in testosterone in either the cold water immersion group or the placebo group. So again, no major differences in testosterone with cold water immersion or without.